Welcome back to another rebuild I have for you guys here today on Madden 19. Today it is going to be a realistic rebuild of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Before I get into the team, as usual, the links to my second channel, my Twitter, and my Discord are all down in the description if you would like to click on any of those links. Here's a look at the Buccaneers offense. This past season, they actually weren't that horrible. Jameis Winston, you know, did Winston-like things and threw a lot of interceptions, but that usually happens. Uh, they actually had a lot of yards this year. Ryan Fitzpatrick had some tremendous games as the quarterback for the Buccaneers. Of course, now he's on the Dolphins. Uh, but Jameis Winston has star development in this game. I don't really think he should. But regardless, he does. Hopefully, he can go off for us then. Peyton Barber will be the starting running back. Andre Ellington is here, and I don't think that's Andre Ellington. And then Ronald Jones also doesn't have his face for some reason. Uh, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Brashad Perriman, the wide receivers, are a pretty solid group here. I mean, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are both very good. Of course, Mike Evans being much better, but Chris Godwin, you know, has not been bad since he's come into the league out of Penn State. He had a pretty solid year this past year. He's a, you know, pretty nice compliment to Mike Evans, who is obviously far better, but still, I think Chris Godwin can develop very well and be an amazing number two. Uh, Donovan Smith does not play well in simulation. Just saying that straight up, he's probably going to be horrible. Ali Marpet is a beast at left guard. Ryan Jensen's good at center. I feel like his overall should be a bit higher. I feel like I'd rank him around like an 82, but who knows. Earl Watford, I guess, is the right guard. He's pretty old, 28 years old. He's definitely not staying on the team. Uh, DeMar Dotson is good, but he's 32. He's also six foot nine. I didn't know he was that tall. Um, he's also number 69. That's amazing. Okay. I wonder if he did that on purpose. He probably did, honestly, <laughs> but uh, DeMar Dotson starting at right tackle. He's solid right now, but he's going to regress into oblivion there. Uh, OJ Howard is a god. He is very good. He's going to be one of the best tight ends in the NFL one day. I have a lot of I have a lot of hype around OJ Howard. Cameron Braid's very good as well. And then on the defense, they drafted Devin White. And there's another question I kind of like to ask you guys. So in all like the ro the rosters, most of the rookies have normal development because you actually can't change the development of uh, like players you make or players like this dude. I don't know who the actual picture is. This guy definitely has normal development because it's just whatever the base you know player is. I think the only person I can think of right now in this roster of uh, rookies who has higher than normal is Kyler Murray because I'm pretty sure Denzel Ward is Kyler Murray. That probably means then that Denzel Ward has normal development i hope that's not the case but i'm pretty sure kyler murray is superstar which makes sense but i think devin white should have like star development i'm not going to change it for this rebuild but let me know if you guys think i should change some of the devs of like the rookies on the teams i'm rebuilding because i can't really change the devs of everyone that would take forever and i really don't want to do that but i am definitely down to change like the first round draft picks at least of the team i am rebuilding because i think devin white should have star development at least quick but i'll keep it at normal for this one he might not develop that well actually i'm gonna go back and what i just said I'll, i'm gonna move him up i'm gonna move him up to quick i think that's fair i think he should have star but since the other players in the same draft class don't have uh you know any crazy development i think quick is fair because it's not like a massive boost over normal but it is a notable boost, you know, nonetheless. So I'm going to I'm gonna switch them to quick. Hopefully you guys don't care too much about that. I'm pretty sure he should have star development, though. I think most of you guys can agree with me. Then the rest of the defense, um, they just let go of uh, Gerald McCoy to bring in Ndamukong Sue. You know, pretty comparable players. I guess Ndamukong Sue might be a little bit better. Uh, Shaq Barrett, I moved down to right end. He's currently an outside linebacker in this roster, but he definitely fits more as a right end in a 4-3. Carl Nassib, they're at left end. Left end. I know they have JPP. Uh, but he's kind of old. He's 29 years old. He's going to regress. I don't really want him on this team anymore, if I'm being real here. I'd rather have Carl Nassib and Shaq Barrett be the edge rushers. They also have Noah Spence, who's pretty young. I think he's like 25. 24. All right. They have a lot of defensive linemen depth. They also have Adama Kinsu, like I just mentioned, Vita Vea, Bo Allen, William Golston. They have a lot of defensive linemen depth who are all pretty good. I don't think I'm going to throw JPP on the trade block or anything, but I'll just try not to bring him back. Uh, Vernon Hargraves, I don't think has been that great in real life. I could definitely be wrong. But he plays pretty well in Madden. He, I've seen him like being the best defensive back of the year conversation in this game, so hopefully he can do that for us. Sean Bunting they just drafted. 75 overall here out of Central Michigan. I know, I think it's uh, Moonlight Swami is like massively huge on Sean Bunting. I'm pretty sure he loves him a lot. I don't watch much college film. I don't watch any college film, to be honest. So maybe he is a beast. Usually Moonlight Swami kind of knows what he's talking about, so I'm going to take his word for it. Carlton Davis, I think, has star in this game, doesn't he? No, he has quick. Okay, he has star in my Blues franchise. I guess it went up at some point. Uh, but maybe he can develop. I have no idea. And then, is this Mike Edwards? I did not mean to go ever. Uh, is this Mike Edwards? Is that your first name? It is Mike Edwards, rookie out of uh, Kentucky. He has quick dev. So I guess maybe if it's like a generated player like that, because obviously that's not a real person, maybe then 
they're able to change the developments. I just kind of wish the person who made this roster did that for everyone then, but whatever. And then Justin Evans starting at free safety. I wish he was still a rookie in this roster, but he is not. Anyway, though, that is the team. Hopefully they... Actually, I, I kind of want them to do really badly this year, just so I can get a nice draft pick. If Jameis Winston has a terrible season, I may draft a quarterback. Because quarterbacks fall really, really easily in this draft class um, this upcoming year. I might do it. I don't know. I'll have to gauge... Uh, you know, that decision later based on his numbers. At the midseason mark here, the team only has two wins, but I'm perfectly okay with that. I really want them to go like 2-14. and 14. <laughs> I would love to get like the first or the second overall pick and maybe try to trade it down. Uh, the Saints are 5-2, and two, the Panthers and the Falcons are both 3-4. and four. A couple players have experience points. You know, Chris Godwin has two. That's nice to see. Uh, then defensively, only one going around for a couple people. Like, I feel like if Devin White had star dev at this point, he'd have at least two. So, quick dev doesn't really seem to be that much of a difference, but I did not mean to scout. I meant to go into, you know, the impending free agents. I see Cairo Santos. I'll probably give him a contract because he's a pretty good kicker. Who else is here, though? Anybody notable? Uh, Donovan Smith, I really don't want. Jeremiah Ledbetter. No, Devontae Bond. Mike Leidke. Maybe that's how it's pronounced. I have no idea. And then David Rivers, I don't want. So the only player I'm going to bring back is Cairo Santos. So very obviously, we did not make the playoffs this year. How many wins did we get? We got five, so that should still be like a top five draft pick. The Saints were 12-4, and four, the Falcons 7-8-1, and one, the Panthers 6-10. and 10. So we actually weren't that far behind, you know, uh, the bottom three teams. 1-3 in the preseason, lost the opening three games, beat the Bears, though, who are pretty good in this game. Lost two more, beat the Bengals, lost a couple, won three in a row, lost to the Saints, Ravens, Cowboys, and Falcons to end out this season. So a couple of those games looks like our offense was pretty decent. I mean, it looked like our offense was pretty decent, I guess. Uh, Jameis Winston was rather tragic. 3,467 yards, 25 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. I don't really see this team going anywhere with him, at least in Madden. Maybe in real life as well, but man, that was not a good season. I want more. Uh, but he also didn't have that much help. I mean, he, he sort of did, but Peyton Barber sucks in the game. I knew he wasn't going to play well. That's just kind of how it works for some reason. If a running back's under an 80, they will never, ever play well. But I mean, the wide receivers on this team are all pretty good. Chris Godwin had a great season, 926 yards, 8 touchdowns. OJ Howard was solid. Mike Evans, only 4 touchdowns. I mean, Jameis Winston has some help around him. He just isn't playing that well right now. I mean, the offensive line isn't fantastic, but there's a couple good pieces, I guess. Uh, Donovan Smith did not play nearly as badly as I thought he would. Damar Dotson was okay. You know, Ali Marpet doing pretty well there on the inside. 121 tackles from Devin White with 3 interceptions. Hopefully that's Defensive Rookie of the Year. 21 tackles for loss for Indomitian Sioux. I will most likely bring him back to the team as well. He plays really well in this game. I mean, he's also very good in real life, too. Uh, eight sacks for Shaquille Barrett, seven for Carl Nassib. Not all that bad. Interceptions. We got three from Devin White, Carlton Davis, and Sean Bunting. Hopefully, Bunting can go up in overall. That would be sweet. Two for Levante David and Justin Evans. One from Vernon Hargraves, Kendall Beckwith, and Mike Edwards. Do we have any defensive touchdowns? I see at least one safety, though. We have one defensive touchdown from Sean Bunting. Uh, we have two safeties, Levante David and Shaq Barrett. And then zero blocked kicks. So the offense was almost last. That makes sense. Pretty bad passing attack. Pretty bad running attack. Uh, the defense was 16th, though. That can definitely uh, be improved by this draft in the offseason and whatnot. Anybody for MVP? Very much doubt it. NFC Offensive Player of the Year, Ezekiel Elliott. Nobody from the Buccaneers. Defensive Player of the Year, Khalil Mack. Anybody from the Bucks? Devin White at number 10. All right, any rookies? I'm not seeing a rookie above him. That's a good sign. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Kyler Murray wins that one. Like I mentioned earlier, it is Denzel Ward for some reason. Uh, anybody from the Buccaneers? I'm not seeing anyone. DK Metcalf is up there, though. That's pretty cool. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Devin White. There we go. Sean Bunting at number 7. Carlton Davis at number 8. Honestly, not bad. Hopefully those guys can develop, because if we can develop this very young cornerback core, that would be amazing. Uh, so not many experience points on offense. I think the most is two. And then defensively, we have only one for Sean Bunting. Vernon Hargraves got four. Carlton Davis got two. Devin White got four. All right, so the cornerback core will slowly get better, but I was really hoping Sean Bunting would get, like, four because he'd randomly make a Pro Bowl or something. Did he make a Pro Bowl? No, he did not. Uh, that sucks. That has to be the strangest Super Bowl I've ever seen year one of a rebuild. The Broncos and the Cardinals. Let's advance the week. How how did this happen? Who won? The Cardinals are going to win a Super Bowl 35-17 to with Kyler Murray at the helm. All right, he's ridiculous in the game. Anyway, though, 
And Dominican Sue, I definitely want back. He's an 87 overall. He's at least good enough for one more season, maybe two. Uh, Donovan Smith wasn't that bad, but the fact that he didn't play badly leads me to believe that, you know, I could kind of have anyone play there because I've seen him let up like upwards of 25 sacks in his season. So I'm still not going to re-sign him. I don't think he's going to do that again. But Indomitian Sue, I do want back. Uh, let's just give him a two-year deal. Bring this down a little. I'm okay with having him for two more seasons. He's coming back to the team, and now we have our defensive tackle position on lock for at least two more years because him and Vita Vea make a great pair. And now we can go into free agency looking to sign some players. So $24.11 million, .11. Uh, Anthony Barr is the top player. He would have been an intriguing player to go after, uh, but I kind of can't because the Dolphins are giving him a ton of money. I still might throw him a contract in case he randomly accepts it. Jay Ajayi could be an interesting one because we really need a running back. And I don't know if I want to draft one again or like trust in drafting one. Because if I mess out on some of the top guys, it may not end well. Let me just take a look down here a little more, see who else is available. I could like kind of need cornerbacks, but I kind of want to let these young guys play it out for one more season and then maybe make a change then. I'd probably end up drafting one in that situation. Um, I'm not really seeing anyone who I want to badly. I think the only player I'll go after, <laughs> Des Bryant just looks weird. I think the only player I'll go after is going to be Jay Ajayi. Let's see if we got Jay Ajayi. We did get Jay Ajayi. We did not get Anthony Barr. I didn't give him a big deal. I don't have too much money left, so I just gave him like 99 points, you know, worth of a contract. Obviously, he didn't accept. I didn't really expect him to, but, you know, it, it could have randomly happened. You never know, I guess. So we have the second overall pick in the draft. I'm obviously just going to sim to the second pick. I don't really care what the Jaguars take. They're going with Grant Delpit. I would have sort of liked him, but... He really isn't that necessary. Let's check out the trade down options because I think I'm going to trade this one down. So I can get the 19th overall pick and a third round draft pick from the Bears this year for, or end a first next year. That could be an option. There's a, actually, I think I see the one I'm going to take. Sorry, I, I was, you know, looking at the Raiders one by, like, while being highlighted on the Bengals one. The Bengals option isn't too bad. I don't think they're going to play too well next year, but I want to pick earlier than the 15th this year. I think I might go with this Raiders pick because that's a first next year. I don't think they're going to do that well next year, and it's also a fourth this year. There's a first and a second this year. Hold on a second. That's a first and a second this year from the 49ers and a second next year. That's definitely up there. And then there's the Falcons pick. This is really tough. I think I want another first next year rather than having a second next year. I think I'd take a first and a fourth this year and a first next year rather than a first and a second this year and a second next year. Let's go with this Raiders pick. I may even trade this one down if I'm being honest. Let's see who's available though. So the Raiders are going to trade up and go with Andrew Thomas at left tackle. The Colts going with Derek Brown. The Dolphins going with CJ Henderson. And now it is our pick again. Let me just check out the trade down options. If there's nothing nothing here, I think I'll just take a selection. Yeah, I don't think I want any of those trade down options. So let's see who we could select with the fifth overall pick in this draft. So we could go with Tua if we wanted to. I think I might try to wait until the second round to go with him. Justin Herbert is an option. Trey Smith always an option. I think Walker Little might be the selection. I know he's very good. And we very much need an offensive lineman at some point. So it could be Walker Little... It could be Tommy Kramer. I don't really want him all that much. Trey Smith is very good. Mekhi Becton, Alaric Jackson. I never really go with them because I think they're supposed to be late. And I just think Walker Little is going to be better. So let's select him. He's going to be a 79 overall star development. He should come in and start right away and just be a god immediately. We are now approaching the second round. We have the second pick in the second round. Let's see who is still here to take. Justin Herbert's available. Jake Fromm is here. Jacob Eason. So I still have my pick at quarterback. I could have went with Najee Harris with this pick. Who else is supposed to go in the first round? That's actually the end of it there. Henry Ruggs is a good wide receiver. I know he's very good on this roster. He could be the selection. But I also never go with one of these top quarterbacks, Jake Fromm or Justin Herbert. So I think I might spend this pick on one of those guys. I think it's going to be Jake Fromm. He just looks like he has better top three skills. So I'm sorry, Jameis. You're going to get benched for Jake Fromm. Here we go. 78 overall, but he does have star development. Very good stats in the game. Really accurate, short, and medium-wise. You know, he can move if he needs to. 72 speed. I've definitely seen worse. Um, but he's definitely going to start this year. To be honest, I may have even been able to go with him in the third round. Let's see who's still here. Is Justin Herbert still available? Justin Herbert is still here. That's pretty funny. Um, I could go with Tyler Vaughns. He looks really nice. He's very fast. 4-4-2 speed is great, especially being 6 foot 2. That's amazing speed for being that tall. Um, let me just see who's here at 
offensive lineman. I don't really need a center. I could go Calvin Throckmorton. He's not that bad, but the fact that he's kind of fallen a little bit leads me to believe he may not be that good. I'm going to go with that wide receiver. I'll take a number, another number three wide receiver. Try to make it a little bit easier uh, for Jake Fromm. So Tyler Vaughn's 79 overall quick development. Is that the third 79 overall player in a row? What was Fromm? Was Fromm a 78? I think he may have been. Uh, but Tyler Vaughn's looks good. 91 speed. Not too bad for being six foot two. I actually thought that'd be a bit faster. 88 catching is fantastic. Good short route running. He can definitely play the slot. But I think I might have Chris Godwin do that. Or I might just have Chris Godwin play the two and have Tyler Vaughn's play the slot. That seems smarter to me. So we're going to go that route. I might go with a safety. Isaiah Pryor. I feel like I've drafted him recently. But I don't think he's started. So maybe now he can start at strong safety. Because I don't think our strong safety got much experience. Isaiah Pryor. 75 overall. Strong safety. I'm totally down for him to start. I think that draft went really, really well. The only thing I would have changed is, like, if I could manually change something, it would have been having Tua fall to us in the second round, but obviously that didn't happen. I also simmed after the fourth pick, and we ended up drafting C.D. Lamb. So he's a 76 in this roster with normal. The reason why I don't normally take him is because he's only a 76. I feel like he should be a higher overall, probably with, like, quick or star development, but here's the rest of the draft, if you care at all. I was actually thinking about taking that, that side tack dude in uh, the fourth round tier where we drafted prior. But let's check out the NFL after the fifth pick because I showed all those. All right, so Raekwon Davis went and then Trey Smith after our pick. Jerry Judy went to the Steelers. I feel like that happens a lot. Jalen Thompson went to the Panthers. T Higgins going uh, to the Chiefs there. Dylan Moses to the 49ers. Chase Young to the Bills. He looks like a beast too, 79 overall. Chase Lucas to uh, the Falcons. I see this a lot as well. Patty Fisher to the Lions. Curtis Weaver. Uh, to the Bengals so some teams got a lot better but a lot of other teams drafted some people who aren't that good like Alaric Jackson here 75 overall really nothing special this Tommy Kramer guy's pretty good I gotta look to draft him one of these times I think the team is far better than it was last season I think this team's actually pretty good already but we have Jake Fromm now starting at quarterback Jameis Winston I guess is here to mentor him a little bit I don't really know his dev even went down he really didn't have a good season last year I don't really expect him to play all that well anyway um, I didn't really expect him to play that well anyway, is what I meant to say. But Jake Fromm hopefully will come in and play much better, ideally win Rookie of the Year, but you never know. Jay Ajayi, I hope, plays a lot better than Peyton Barber. I'm almost sure he will. Uh, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and then Tyler Vaughns are now the wide receivers. Vaughns looks like a beast. He's a 79 overall. He should play really well. Walker Little, Allie Marpet, Ryan Jensen. Uh, is your first name Zach? It is Zach, okay, I almost forgot it. And then DeMar Dotson, so pretty much the same offensive line, at least, you know, Marpit, Jensen, Dotson are all the same, but Little and Sipetak are different, or Sipetak? I don't know how to pronounce that, whatever. Those guys are different, Walker Little will make a huge difference. OJ Howard just going up and overall like he does. And then defensively, we now have a new strong safety, and I think that's it. Everybody else is the same, just a little bit more upgraded, you know, upgraded versions of themselves. And then specialist, I actually did not look at this, but it looks okay to me. I think I want to change this is Anthony Nelson Isaiah 63 whatever I think I might want to change our rush right end I'll keep a JPP for this season let's see what he can do his final season as a Buccaneer because actually I don't know if he's a free agent but I don't really want to bring him back whenever he does become a free agent but let's just see what he can do here I think everything else is fine though so hopefully we can at least have a positive record this year. That's all I'm really looking for. The team is doing far better than they were last year at this point. They're actually the complete opposite. Five and two for our team. Four and four for the Panthers. Two and five for the Saints and the Falcons. So Jake Fromm has two experience points. That's what I like to see. A few other players have one. Uh, defensively, two for Shaq Barrett. One for a bunch of other players as well. So it looks like the team, you know, is playing pretty well. Jameis Winston actually needs a contract. And I am not willing to pay him. Because he's the backup quarterback. He can go to another team and hopefully prosper. I don't really know. I'm also not going to bring back DeMar Dotson right now. He's an 81 currently. But I'm sure at the end of the season, he will be a 76. A 76 overall is my optimistic guess. Honestly, he could be even lower than that. Uh, Carl Nassib and Noah Spence are both here. I feel like there's no need to bring them both back to the team. Uh, because they are very similar overalls. I think I'll bring back Carl Nassib. He fits the scheme, so I think I'll retain him. Even if he doesn't start, he probably isn't all that expensive. Uh, Vernon Hargraves, I do want. Andre Ellington, I don't really care about. Sean Bunting, I want. I don't think I want anybody else down here. So the team did not make the playoffs. We finished 5-2. How did we end? We ended 7-9? Are you serious? 
So we only got two more wins after the midseason mark and lost seven. All right, well, that's annoying. Let's check out the team schedule. Two and two in the preseason. Won the opening game, lost to the Panthers, won two more, lost to the Colts, beat the Falcons, the Giants, and the Panthers, lost one, two, three, four, five, six in a row, beat the Jags, lost to the 49ers. That really, really sucks. <laughs> so the Falcons and the Panthers both were 9-7. and seven. The Saints were 4-12. and 12. Jake Fromm played way better than Jameis Winston did, though. 4,331 yards, 34 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, 70% completion percentage. He was really good, and I think I voice cracked in there. Regardless, uh, he played well. <laughs> Jay Ajayi, 1,100 yards, 8 touchdowns. I'll take that. Mike Evans, 1,166 yards, 6 touchdowns. OJ Howard, 6 touchdowns. Chris Godwin, 7. Tyler Vaughn's 8 touchdowns, 811 yards. Those guys all played really well. The sack number is actually extremely low. Walker Little only let up 6 sacks. 118 tackles for Devin White. How many tackles for loss do we have? Only 10 from Indomitian Sue this year. Not many sacks. The defense looks kind of... Actually, never mind. Shaquille Barrett played well. Everyone else didn't really do too much. Interceptions. We have 4 for Vernon Hargraves, 3 for Devin White, 2 for Justin Evans. Devin White has 6 interceptions already in his short career. That's pretty good. Offensive... Nope. Defensive touchdowns. Almost said offensive touchdowns. Whatever. Safeties. None. Blocked kicks. Uh, none. So, we were 6th on offense. So, the offense went up drastically. Defense probably fell off. 12th. Okay, never mind. We were actually pretty good on defense. Well, Marcus Mariota won, wins MVP, so I guess, I guess anything can happen. Um, anybody from the Buccaneers? We got Jake Fromm in there at number 10. I don't think there's a rookie. So that's always cool. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, Jake Fromm at number 8. Any rookies above him? No, I don't see anyone. Defensive Player of the Year is Zach Brown. Devin White, though, at number 7. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jake Fromm. There we go. Tyler Vaughn's at number 5. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Patty Fisher wins that one. Uh, Isaiah Pryor at number 8 also is not too bad. So hopefully Fromm has a ton of experience points. Show me like 7. That would be amazing. He has 5. Okay, I'll still take it. Uh, 2 for some other players. 3 for Walker Little. Tyler Vaughn's also has 2 up there, or down there I guess. Uh, defensively, I see 3 uh, for Devin White. 6 for Vernon Hargraves. Why does he develop so well? What is his development? It went down. It was actually quick last year, but somehow it went down. Shaq Barrett has three. Not too bad. A few other players uh, developing as well. I think this cornerback core is going to be able to develop on their own. I may draft one this year, but I don't even know if I'll need to, to be honest. Maybe not. At least the Super Bowl this year is far more believable than last year. The Texans took down the Packers. Let's advance the week. Go into free agency. So, $42.47 million. That's without bringing back Jameis Winston. That's mostly where that money came from. Who can I bring in? Eric Ebron. Don't want Eric Ebron. <laughs> I don't need him on this team. Kareem Hunt. I forgot to change his overall. That's my bad. And his age. I don't think he's actually 28. My bad. I'll try to do that for next time. Uh, Shaq Thompson, you know, could be a starting caliber player on this team. He's much better than Kendall Beckwith. Jerry Hughes isn't too bad. Jatavis Brown might be an option as well. He's a player I don't normally see in free agency i may go after him i'm not going to go after any cornerback in this class in this free agency class here even though i kind of need a corner not really i mean the cornerbacks on the team aren't horrible right now i didn't use my experience points either yet um but i might draft one it depends on who is available but i think for now i will go after i don't know jatavis brown what's your development uh you have normal development shaq thompson normal development Okay, they both have normal. Let's go after Jatavis Brown. I feel like he plays better in Sim. Let's see if we got Brown. We did. We got Jatavis Brown on the team. So he can come in and play left outside linebacker, right? That's correct. Okay, it is. Good. So he definitely solidifies our defense a little bit more. We have two first round draft picks this year, which is always nice to see. We have the seventh overall pick. I know exactly who I want with this pick if he is available. So let's see. The Saints go with Rondell Moore first overall. Of course, wrong college. I understand. Michael Parsons goes number two overall. Devon Hunter, Devin Hunter, however it's pronounced, goes number three. The Vikings go with Ayabi Anoma. I probably butchered that, but solid-looking left outside linebacker out of Alabama. Come on, we only have two more picks to sit through. Foster Serrell, I kind of wanted him, goes to the Giants, the Bengals. Please don't take my man. And you're not going to take my man. Cesar Ruiz, or Cesar Ruiz, goes uh, right there. But right now, we are going to go with our right tackle. Calvin Ashley looks like a beast out of Auburn. That might not even be the college he actually goes to. I don't actually know, but here we go. Calvin Ashley, 80 overall, quick development. He's a massive dude. 
He was six foot six, three hundred and ten pounds. He's huge. Very good stats. He's going to play right tackle uh, because Demar Dotson I did not bring back to the team. I didn't even notice what his overall was. I'll have to check that out then. We also have the thirteenth pick here. I guess this is actually our draft pick, and Trevor Lawrence, of course, is still available. So the cornerback I was thinking about taking was already selected. I wanted to go with Stanford Samuels, but he's gone. Patrick Sertan Jr. or Sertan. I heard. I think Bengal says Sertan, so maybe that's right. Uh, he's still here, and I feel like he's faster than than running a four or five. I could be wrong though. Uh, who else is here though? Let me just take a look at everybody. I could still use another offensive lineman. Are there other offensive linemen here? Yeah, Blaze Andrews looks okay. He actually looks better than okay. He could fill the rest of our offensive line pretty well. And then maybe I can take Asante Samuel Jr. in the second round. I know I'd already, I, I took him in my last rebuild, but I wouldn't totally be um, opposed to taking him again. Let me look at the rest of the offensive linemen quick. Isaiah Wilson is still here. 39 reps. He looked pretty good. Um, but the thing is, I scouted this guy. Let's see when they're supposed to go. Blaze Andrews, late first rounder. This dude, mid first rounder. I'm going to go with Isaiah Wilson, I think. You're going to slide into guard anyway. 80 overall star development. My God. Okay. Maybe you won't slide into guard. Because they're not very fast. I feel like guards are supposed to be sort of quick and agile. You could probably get the job done in Madden, though, if I'm being honest. So I think I might do that. <laughs> Let's see if Asante Samuel Jr. is available with my pick here. Ricky Slade just went. He's a 78 overall. All right. I mean, he's cool to watch at Penn State, but not sure if he'll be that high of an overall. Um, but here we go. Cornerbacks. There are none that I want. Okay, so I don't even know how many of these players are actually real, because I don't think this entire draft class is filled with real players. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to throw them all on my draft board here, and then just take, you know, best player available or something, and then probably sim the rest. I could go with another quarterback. I could go with James Cook as a backup or running back. Um, could go with a safety. I don't really need. I think our safeties are all right right now. This guy's six foot six, out of Alabama. Let's just go with his running back. He has a really good combine. James Cook, 79 overall, quick development. I don't really need another running back either, but he's a decent receiving option, 73 catching on him. I'm just going to send to the end of the draft here. I think that was another very, very good draft. We definitely filled some more holes. This team should be able to make the playoffs this year, but you can never trust Madden. So we got 280 overall offensive linemen, a 79 overall halfback, and then here's one player I threw in my draft board, and there are the other two. They're actually all not too bad. What's the dev on this guy? He has normal dev. The dude beneath him is really fast. He has 93 speed, I think. And he has quick dev. The guy's actually pretty good. 93 speed, 78 man, 76 press. That's not all that bad. Um, let's go to the rest of the NFL here. I want to check out what that guard, uh, what his overall was. So there's Rondell Moore, Michael Parsons. We saw all those guys. Um, so Stanford Samuels went directly after us. I want to draft him really badly one of these times. 82 overall, quick development, ridiculous stats. I'll definitely have to at some point. Xavier Thomas, Tyson Campbell... Uh, Caden Stearns, Justin Ross, there's our pick again, Anthony Hines. All right, let's see where that guard went. Blaze Andrews, 79 overall guard, quick development, so I really could not have went wrong with either of them. He's actually not that fast either, but he actually looks a little bit better, his stats, because I know the dude we drafted had a really bad uh, stat that should definitely be higher. He's very strong, but his run block finesse is 66. So his stats aren't even all that good, but he's a solid overall. That should be enough. If anybody is wondering, uh, DeMar Dotson actually retired. So it doesn't even matter what his overall is because he's no longer in the game. This is the team heading into the third season. It's an 84 overall, and I think this team definitely has a solid shot at making it into the playoffs. There really aren't many holes. I don't think there really are any, to be honest. Uh, Jake Fromm had a great rookie season. Hopefully he can continue that into his sophomore year. Jay Ajayi was pretty good in his first season with the Buccaneers. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Tyler Vaughns all played well last year. The offensive line just got better. We added a new right tackle. Walker Little went up in overall. I think Ali Marpit did as well. And then we also added a new right guard, even though he is a left tackle. Whatever. He's an 80 overall right guard. He should do well there. And then OJ Howard, you know, continuing what he has going on. Uh, Jatavis Brown, almost said Jayon Brown. That's not him. Jatavis Brown is now the left outside linebacker. He should play well. Devin White's going up in overall. Levante David is regressing, which sucks, but he still should be good for the next, like, season, maybe two if I need him. Uh, Justin Evans, Isaiah Pryor, maybe, like, there's a hole at safety, but I think they're both still okay. I definitely wouldn't be opposed to replacing one of them in this offseason if we need to go there. The cornerback situation is actually pretty good. Vernon Hargraves is an 86. He's solid. Sean Bunting's going up. Carlton Davis also going up. I feel like those guys will reach, you know, near 80 overall after this season. 
the defensive line is very good still so the team is nice i definitely think they have a lot of potential here hopefully we can make the playoffs so the team isn't doing all that well this year but maybe we can finally have a good second half of the season we are three three and one currently the vikings are struggling one and six for them uh the falcons are seven and one the saints are five and two the panthers are four and four it is going to be really difficult for us to win this division but maybe a miracle can happen and we actually can like usual, a couple players have one experience point on offense. Same goes for defense, but Isaiah Pryor actually has two, which is quite nice. Uh, Levante David is the top free agent. I think I will give him a contract because I do want him still on the team. And Dominican Sue, I don't think I'm going to go after. He does play well in the game, I understand, but he's going to regress really hard. Maybe I'll, I'll give him a contract after he regresses if he's still okay. OJ Howard, I want. Chris Godwin, Shaq Barrett, Devin White, Bradley Pinion. Uh, Justin Evans I want back on the team I think that is it then so I can't negotiate with Justin Evans just yet but I will when the time comes Bradley Pinion, Devin White, Shaq Barrett, Chris Godwin, OJ Howard, and Levante David have all been re-signed and like I mentioned earlier I will revisit Indomitian Sioux at the end of the year so once again we missed out on the playoffs man I don't know what to do I feel like the team is okay 6-9-1 for the record the record does not seem like we are okay 13 and 3 for the Falcons, 9 and 7 for the Saints, 8 and 8 for the Panthers. I may have to break the realism a bit this final season and just sign a ton of free agents. That's usually my like last resort, and it sucks that it usually has to come down to that with these teams that don't have great, you know, starting rosters. Uh, 3 and 1 in the preseason, won the opening two games, tied to the Eagles, beat the Raiders. We started off really well actually. Then of course we just casually lost 5 in a row. Beat the Chiefs, lost 3 more. Beat the Lions, lost, beat the Broncos. All right, well, if it weren't for those, like, sporadic losing streaks, like, the team would be so much better. Jake Fromm, once again, was... Okay, I was going to say he was good, uh, but he threw 21 interceptions. I don't think it matters what your yards and touchdown numbers are. If you're throwing 21 picks, you're not having a good year. But, I mean, he might still get some experience points. That's a lot of interceptions. I can't believe he threw that many. Jay Ajayi was fantastic. 4.6 yards per carry, 16 rushing touchdowns for him. Mike Evans was good. You know, not many touchdowns, but decent production otherwise. OJ Howard was also pretty good. Tyler Vaughns was very good once again. Chris Godwin, six touchdowns for him. Not many sacks allowed here from the offensive line. Like, they're playing very well. Uh, Devin White was phenomenal. 146 tackles, 10 of those for loss. 16 tackles for loss for Adamic and Sue, 14 for Carl Nassib. Uh, we have six and a half sacks for Sue and Nassib. Not too many there. Three interceptions from Isaiah Pryor. Devin White with three once again. Two for Levante David, one from Vernon Hargraves and Carlton Davis. Defensive touchdowns, one from Isaiah Pryor. Um, no safeties and one blocked kick from Scroggins. So we were sixth on offense. Was defense like top 10? It seemed okay. Nah, no, we were 18th. Okay, so we were pretty bad. Todd Gurley in MVP. If Jake Fromm is in this, that's ridiculous. Okay, good. Um, NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Todd Gurley. Uh, defensive player of the year, Deion Jones. Devin White, though, still in the list at number seven. Offensive rookie of the year, James Cook wins that. Our backup running back. Defensive rookie of the year uh, goes to this Mitchell dude from the Lions. Nobody from the Bucks. All right, so we didn't win, you know, any of those important awards this year. But maybe we randomly got someone else to win something. I also spent my experience points at the midseason mark, so that's probably why they look so low. The team is an 86 overall. I mean, the team is good. It really is good. Three experience points here for Devin White and Isaiah Pryor are very nice. After having spent at the midseason, those are really good numbers. Uh, so the team will just improve even more, and will probably even have a worse record. So Andamik and Sue is an 84 overall. I don't really want to bring him back for this final season. I feel like I can find someone better uh, in free agency, and if I can't, I can at least bring him back most likely. Justin Evans, I do want back. Kendall Beckwith isn't too bad, but he's really not starting. He's only a 78. But Justin Evans, I will give a contract to, even if I can find a replacement for him. I'll still give him a contract in case I can't, you know. Uh, he'll probably get some offers if I don't give him one now. So he's back on the team. We can now go into free agency. The Browns took down the Saints in the Super Bowl. Another pretty typical one, you know, for a rebuild. $46.26 million. The top player is Christian McCaffrey as usual, but let's see. Antonio Brown is here. I really don't need a wide receiver, though, so I don't want him. I don't even think I want Christian McCaffrey, even though he's a 98 overall. Jay Ajayi had a good season this past year. Um, I could go after, like, Joe Mixon to mix it up a little bit, to, to mixing it up. Uh, oh, God. Um, Nick Bosa is here for some reason. Why is Nick Bosa here? This might be me breaking the breaking the realism because I might go after him. Um, Jason Kelsey would be a definite improvement over Ryan Jensen. 
at least for this final season. Darius Slay is here, and I think I'll go after him. I really am sorry, but there's not too much I can do. I tried to build a decently realistic team, and why is AJ Brown carry on Johnson? That looks so weird. Um, but I tried to build a relatively realistic team. I think I did that, but the game is pretty unforgiving. Um, so I'm probably going to have to go after Adamican Sue unless Clayus Campbell could play defensive tackle if I needed him to. Um, Marcus Davenport, yeah, probably could get away with it. I won't do it, though. I'll go after a few players here, and it's probably going to look very different from uh, what the previous free agencies were, because I'm going to go after a ton of different players just to try to make this team as good as possible. So I went after a load of different players, but here we go. And Dominican Sue, Nick Bosa, Jason Kelsey, Darius Slay, they all accepted. Obviously, Nick Bosa probably won't be here in real life, you know, in the 2020 or 2021, 2022, wherever we're supposed to be right now. He's probably going to get re-signed by, by the 49ers when, when the time comes. Um, but anyway, the team looks a lot better. And if you were to look at this team, you know, that I have right now, and if you uh, if you heard that I was supposed to be doing a realistic rebuild and you see this kind of team, you'd probably think I'm on some sort of drugs. Because obviously this isn't realistic. Like, <laughs> I don't think the Buccaneers will change this much in the coming years. Maybe they will. Who knows? But there's a lot of, like, huge name players in here that probably won't be on this team. Like Darius Slay. Like Nick Bosa. You know? Jason Kelsey. I don't know. But regardless, this is kind of what you have to do in Madden if it just doesn't work out. And I feel like this team should have worked out the past two seasons. And I'm just getting unlucky. So keeping with the trend of very unrealistic moves, I'm going to just trade up to the number one overall pick by not really giving away all that much. I moved Ryan Jensen to guard and I'm giving them uh, my first round draft pick to get the Titans' first overall pick. And you will soon see why. I'm sorry, obviously not realistic, but whatever. I don't, I don't really care all that much. I kind of lost faith in this rebuild after we didn't make the playoffs three years in a row. But you will definitely soon see why I traded up to number one, because I can't risk this player being drafted. Also to note, uh, this is not a custom draft class. This is an imported random draft class, because I don't feel like looking for a 2022 draft class. Um, but right now, we're going to go with uh, this dude. <laughs> A plus medium route running, A minus spectacular catch, A minus catching. I have seen a few wide receivers like this in my time. He's also 238 pounds. My lord, this dude's a tight end. But I've seen a couple of people like this in my day. I think like three ever. And they've all been like 85 overalls. So let me actually look at the tight ends. He weighs really similarly to some of these guys. Eh, maybe not. He's actually pretty light if he wanted to be a tight end. I think 238 is, is huge, though, for a wide receiver. Maybe not. This dude's 234. Whatever. We're going with Brody Mole. 83. Really? You're only an 83 overall? I mean, that's amazing. I understand it's great, but I really expected you to be, like, an 86. You're extremely slow, but you have ridiculous medium route running, really good spectacular catch, really good catching, really good jumping. All right, well... This guy isn't as good as I thought he was going to be, but I figured I'd trade up and select him just to make the video more interesting. I'm going to send him to the end of the draft because he was like the only player I scouted. I think I had a couple other guys scouted, but he's the only one I cared about. <laughs> Let's see who the team snagged for me later in this draft. Like I mentioned, I hardly scouted at all. Um, we got a 75 overall right end, 74 quarterback, 73 right outside linebacker. Not bad for the fifth round there. Who else was in this draft class? Because I honestly have no idea. There was a decent looking cornerback. How was he? So we had the top player in the class. But let's sort by overall here. 82 overall defensive tackle. That guy looks very good. Here's that corner I was I was talking about. 82 quick dev, 98 speed. Just you know one of those guys. What was your development? Star dev, 82 overall. How much how much strength do you got? 92 strength. Looking pretty good there. A bunch of 81s. Actually a good number of 81s. This draft class was pretty ridiculous. A lot of really talented players here. You know just out of curiosity, I wanted to see what that guy's overall would go up to at tight end, and he's an 87. So look, technically there's an 87 overall star developing tight end in this draft class who would be like the best receiving tight end ever. Just based on his route running alone, to be honest. He's insane. I'm going to move him back to wide receiver though. I'm going to have him play the number three. Maybe he can you know, get a lot of experience that way because he also has star dev. I mean, come on. This dude, <laughs> this dude's very good. I'm going to have him start. I mean, Tyler Vaughn's is also really good, I know. Um, but I kind of want this guy to play the number three just to see what he can do considering he is a rookie. But here's the team. It's an 86 overall. Very nice offense. 93 overall. Jake Fromm's an 88. Jay Ajayi is also an 88. Also, I'm just curious. Is Christian McCaffrey in free agency? DK Metcalf is. Christian McCaffrey is not. So is Josh Jacobs. What's his development? He only has normal dev. 96 speed? Oh my god. Anyway, <laughs> I don't need another wide receiver. 
But the team is very good, and we will likely not make the playoffs here once again. I think we have improved immensely, but the record will likely not show it. There really isn't too much to say about the roster. The team is pretty good in my eyes. I've made the playoffs with much worse teams. The scheme fit on offense isn't all that good, but there's a good number of starters who actually fit the scheme, so I'm not too worried about it. Let's advance the week, and uh, I'll just see you at the end of the year. Hey, we actually made the playoffs this year with a first round bye. We did lose to the Jets, so that ruins all hope of an undefeated season. Uh, but we went 12-3-1. Okay, kind of making up for the past few seasons, maybe. Um, but that's a very good record. 9-7 for the Falcons, 7-9 for the Saints, 2-14 for the Panthers. It is just sort of annoying that in order to have a good record, I guess with the Buccaneers, you have to just go all out and make ridiculous moves. Whatever. 2-2 two two in the preseason. Lost the opening two games. How many did we win in a row? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 straight, tied to the Seahawks, lost to the Jets. So all 12 of our wins came on a win streak. That's pretty cool. Russell Wilson wins MVP, but I'm sure Jake Fromm did well. There we go. That's a ridiculous season to have. Finally, you're going back to kind of... I mean, you surpassed your rookie season for him, but you overcame your sophomore slump, I guess. 4,300 yards almost, 34 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. Jay Ajayi, once again, phenomenal. 1,174 yards, 11 touchdowns. James Cook was okay. He got four touchdowns, I guess. Uh, Chris Godwin was pretty good. Four touchdowns, 87 grabs. Mike Evans was solid. Tyler Vaughn still played really well. I think he was still the slot wide receiver. Yeah, so that Brody Mole guy did nothing. Whatever. I would have rather had this Vaughn's guy play anyway because he almost had 1,000 yards. OJ Howard got seven touchdowns as well. The offensive line has been very good this entire time, and that kind of remains. I mean, 13 sacks from Walker Little isn't fantastic, but definitely seen worse. 113 tackles for Devin White. 14 tackles for loss for Nick Bosa and Vita Vea down there. 10 sacks for Shaq Barrett, 8.5 for Nick Bosa. Interceptions, 2 for Devin White, Jatavis Brown, Darius Slay, and Vernon Hargraves. Devin White's streak of getting 3 picks comes to an end. So now his total for the past 4 years is 11 and not 12. That's unfortunate. I see a safety. I didn't mean to stop on safeties first, but Vita Vea got one. Also see a defensive touchdown from Hargraves. Block kicks. We have one. Carl Nassib. Let's go. Sixth on offense. Do we have a top 10 defense? Probably not. 25th. That was the worst our defense has ever been, and somehow this is the best the team has ever done. Whatever. Uh, three. No, yeah, I just said the number three. <laughs> Jake Fromm is third for MVP. Uh, my brain is sort of fried right now from talking for so long and being kind of tired. But Russell Wilson, Offensive Player of the Year as well as being MVP. Jake Fromm at number 5. Defensive Player of the Year, Devin White finally wins one, even though it was probably the worst season he's had. <laughs> Offensive Rookie of the Year. It was still a good season, but he's definitely had better ones. Uh, nobody from our team. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Nobody from our team. Best Quarterback, Russell Wilson wins it, but Jake Fromm follows him up. Best Running Back, Ezekiel Elliott. Jay Ajayi at number 7. Best wide receiver, Taylor Gabriel, uh, wins that one. He, I feel like he wins it randomly all the time. That's so strange. Tyler Lockett's a 94. That's also really cool. AJ Brown wins it. I mean, carry on Johnson, whatever. <laughs> he wins it. Tyler Vaughn's at number five. That's nice. Uh, best offensive lineman, Zach Martin, wins it. But Ali Marpet, Jason Kelsey are in there. Best defensive lineman uh, goes to Aaron Donald. Shaq Barrett at number four. Nick Bosa at number nine. Best linebacker, Deion Jones, wins it over Devin White. Best defensive back, Shaquille Griffin. Best kicker, Aldrick Rosas, but Cairo Santos, the first player I think we've ever brought back to this team. At number five, he's still, you know, kicking, literally. But here we go. We have five experience points for Jake Fromm. He's going to be a beast. Four for Hole. How did you get four? Or Mole, my bad. Mole, maybe? Did you make the Pro Bowl? No. How did you get four? You really just got four for having star development? That's nuts and really broken. Tyler Vaughn's played really well, and he only got three. Like, what? <laughs> you had three catches. He had, like, 60. You had, like, 20 yards. He had 1,000. I don't know. On the defense, though, we have five for Devin White. Four, Isaiah Pryor, man. He developed really, really well. Nick Bosa at number three. You know, he developed so well, I had to say really twice. Um, let's use these experience points. We have to go up against the 49ers here in the playoffs, but uh, here's a look at the team, and Chris Godwin actually has another experience point. Go back into deep threat. Maintain his scheme fit. I don't, Even though I don't even think he could have lost it if I went into anything else. Um, but yeah, we have to take on the 49ers. Hopefully we can, you know, come away with a win. I guess Mull is going to start now because he went up higher than Vaughn's did for some reason. Uh, the offense is a 99, essentially maxed out. The defense is a 91. And Justin Evans also has an experience point. I'll use that real quick. I'm just going to keep going into run support. Get him up to an 83 overall. It doesn't really matter if they fit the scheme at this point. Experience isn't all that big of a deal right now. 
But the team is very good. What is the overall difference? We should have a far better overall than the 49ers. They have an 89, and we have a 91, so it's nowhere near being, you know, a huge difference. But we also stole Nick Bosa. Let's advance the week. Are they going to get their revenge? Are they sad that we took Nick Bosa? Um, they are very much sad. They destroyed us. 31 to 17. Very fitting end to this rebuild. We missed out on the playoffs the first three years. Make it with a great record and then lose the first round. <laughs> so 31 to 17. We had 389 total yards and we still lost. Jake Fromm was okay. I mean, he threw two interceptions. That sucks, but also had two touchdowns over 300 yards. Jamie Garoppolo was all right as well. Joe Mixon, I guess, is on, you know, the 49ers now. He did okay. Jay Ajayi, actually pretty good average, but didn't get many handoffs. OJ Howard was good. Mike Evans was also good. George Kittle scored. Joe Mixon scored. All right, well, I guess their defense kind of just shut us down. Picked off Jake Fromm twice, which definitely helped them out. But that is going to conclude this rebuild. I'm sorry I got really unrealistic in the end, but that's probably what's going to have to happen whenever I rebuild these teams, you know, that don't have great luck in Madden. Like the Buccaneers, I hardly ever see them in the playoffs. They don't have a bad roster in the game, really. They have some young players who should play well that just don't. That's typically how they, how it goes. Like Jameis Winston. I remember in past Maddens, he'd go off. This year, he doesn't seem to play too well. So I apologize if you were kind of mad that I let him go, but it happens. I feel like they might let him go in real life if he has another bad year. Um, I don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this video now. I'm just rambling. But thank you guys very much for watching. If you guys did end up enjoying, feel free to leave a like and leave a comment. I respond to every comment that I can. I at least try to. And I definitely appreciate the likes and all that good stuff. Thank you guys for the growth as well. My, my channel has been growing pretty, um, you know, pretty nicely over the past few weeks. We've been getting good number of views, pretty consistent number of views on these rebuilds. And I really do appreciate it. It's actually amazing uh, to see these videos get over like 5,000 views. That's awesome. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.